The Toronto Raptors have committed a large portion of their future to point guard Emmanuel quickly, but what sort of impact can the Raptors fans really expect a player to have for the long-term future? Is he the future star that he's cracked up to be by Raptors fans? Let's get into it. Welcome back, everybody. This is Amateur Hour Sports, the YouTube channel completely dedicated to providing you with Toronto Raptors news coverage and analysis and videos just like this, as well as our live stream watch parties for Raptors games. If you like what you see from today's video, then make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Help us on the road to 17,000 subs because when we get there, we're giving away two Scotty Barnes jerseys into the community. But also, if you find yourself enjoying this one along the way, make sure you do hit that like button, help drive us up in that YouTube algorithm. But today, we're focusing on Emmanuel quickly. Yes, the Raptors have not been playing well as of late, even though they did actually play pretty well in that loss against the Phoenix Suns. But there has been some bright spots, even with the up and down results, mostly down in terms of results. But what hasn't necessarily been down is the overall play of Emmanuel quickly since joining the Toronto Raptors. It kind of feels as though yesterday was when Emmanuel quickly and RJ Baird arrived from the New York Knicks. But surprisingly, we've already seen 28 games of Emmanuel quickly in a Toronto Raptors uniform thus far, and he only played in 30 games with the New York Knicks. So we're pretty even in terms of the games played between the Knicks and the Raptors this season. So we're going to break down the differences that we've seen with the player from his time in New York compared to his time now in Toronto because the Raptors have completely reshaped his role. So should fans be optimistic about how far this player can go in the future? Well, for starters, Emmanuel, quickly, let's talk about the good things that he brings to the team. The Raptors have been longing for a player with pull-up ability and Emmanuel quickly 100% possesses that trait here. His ability to space the floor is a welcome sight to see, but it's not just the floor spacing and shooting the Raptors needed. Again, it's the pull-up jumpers. It's what Fred Van Vliet brought to the team previously. He wasn't so efficient in his final season with the Raptors in bringing that, but he and Kyle Lowry were so effective at those pull-up threes, Emmanuel quickly is starting to develop these tendencies, and he's starting to learn a pretty new position to himself here in the point guard slot. Yes, he has played as a point guard previously. You know, we can talk about his Kentucky days. We can talk about his early days with the New York Knicks, but his final two seasons with the New York Knicks were very much dominated as a shooting guard player, kind of the off guard as the sixth man to Jalen Brunson. So wasn't getting the bulk of those ball handling opportunities. Was kind of that firecracker sort of scoring player that the Raptors certainly needed, but the Raptors knew they could also upgrade that sort of role for the player. So let's take a look at how his role has changed, and it's changed significantly since his time with the New York Knicks. First of all, let's look at what his numbers were in his time at MSG so far this season. It was 30 games with the New York Knicks, and in those 30 games, he averaged 15 points, 2.6 rebound, 2.5 assists, along with a very, very nice two-point percentage of just under 51%, and a three-point percentage, nothing to scoff at here, my goodness, of just under 40%, which gave him an effective field goal percentage of 5.49. So, Raptors, you know, not bringing in maybe the most notable playmaker, judging by these statistics, but bringing in shooting, bringing in scoring, that's kind of what this team needed this season, and what it absolutely needs going forward. And, the fit seemed so good next to Scotty Barnes moving forward that it was a dream matchup when the Raptors ended up acquiring him from those New York Knicks. But his role has changed quite significantly since coming to Toronto. Again, playing as the lead ball handler for the team. How exactly has that affected his statistics? Well, let's take a look here. Would these extra reps, would these extra minutes now starting for the Raptors instead of coming off the bench as a six man as he was with the New York Knicks, he's up to scoring too, 17 and a half points per game. He's upped his rebounding. It's much more involved here to 4.7 rebounds. But what is significant, he's jumped from in the assist category, 2.5 per game with the New York Knicks this season to 6.5 with the Raptors so far in his time here in 28 games. And the crown jewel as a playmaker performance-wise was in that game against the Phoenix Suns where he puts up a very nice 21 points for the Raptors, but also adds on a career high of 18 assists, absolutely diming with a shorthanded Raptors team against a talented Phoenix Suns team. But where we've seen a bit of maybe negative changes to Emmanuel quickly, which we need to discuss, is in the efficiency categories here. As we saw with the New York Knicks, just under 51% shooting on two pointers this season. Well, with the Raptors in 28 games, that has dropped pretty mightily to a 4-2-5 percentage on two point attempts. His, his three point percentage has jumped up, and with a higher volume, that is great to see. He's gone up to 41.6 shooting from the outside, which gives him an effective field goal percentage of 522. So, 
We've seen big improvements with the playmaking, but we've seen a little bit of drawbacks in terms of the overall efficiency on those two point attempts. So why has there been these changes for quickly? So as I said, his role has changed in playing in the point guard position. And even still, Raptors fans have kind of limited his ceiling and their projections for him based on the fact that, you know, six and a half assists is great considering he's averaging 2.5 with the New York Knicks. However, his playmaking could still stand to improve with this team. Often he's not making necessarily the right decision in terms of playmaking. And often some of these passes are a little bit loose. Perhaps some of them are getting turned over. Perhaps some of them are not quite hitting the shooting pocket necessarily. And as I said, some of them maybe are not quite the right decisions to be made overall for the Raptors. That along with his finishing on the inside has left for maybe a little bit of concern here for the 24 year old in terms of like the max ceiling that he can actually produce here. As we saw with the two point percentage that has dropped here. What makes Emmanuel quickly great with his finishing on the inside is the floater. Something that the Raptors have been longing for a point guard who could hit these floaters, who could attack the space, get to the rim and hit that floater over the defender, the big defender likely waiting at the rim. But where he needs to clean up his game in terms of this efficiency on the inside is the two-pointers getting actually to the rim. Like the floater is nice, but sometimes you actually do have to get to the rim, get right to the rack. And he hasn't done a very good job so far with the Raptors in finishing through that contact and battling through the defenders to actually get to the rim to get those absolute highest percentage of looks. But there is definitely reason for optimism here, and I am extraordinarily high on Emmanuel quickly, and I want to convince you why you should be as well. For starters, in the finishing category, yeah, two-point percentage of 4.25 in a decent sample size of 28 games here. It's just not really good enough for a starting point guard on an NBA team. That being said, this is low for Emmanuel quickly. This is not the norm. I mean, we saw with the New York Knicks this season, the 51% shooting on twos this season. And actually, we could say that's more towards the norm for Emmanuel quickly, perhaps if he's playing on a more talented team, because... Last season with the New York Knicks, in a full season, he shot 52% on twos. The year before that, he shot 45% on twos. And the year before that was his rookie season where, okay, it wasn't the best at 40%, but has improved on that aspect of his game. And there were signs that he was becoming a pretty dominant player on twos for the New York Knicks. And maybe just hasn't really transpired over to the Raptors as of yet. Perhaps it's team-oriented. Perhaps there's just something weird going on with Raptors shooters this season. There's some sort of voodoo against this team. You know, Kelly Olenek, a very good three-point shooter, hasn't really been able to hit threes for the Raptors. RJ Barrett, a very good free throw shooter, has just not been able to hit free throws with the Raptors. Whatever it is, it seems as though this two-point percentage is just some low variance overall for Emmanuel Quickly. It is slightly concerning and it does need to clean up, but there is evidence that this has been better for a very long period of time for Man Quickly, basically a season and a half of very efficient scoring on the inside, it's bound to improve at some point for the Raptors, especially as a team fine-tunes themselves from a strategical perspective and as hopefully the team improves over time. But we've seen the elevation three-point percentage, that with extra volume of shooting on threes and with the additional pull-up shooting on threes. I think scoring-wise, he's going to be just fine. But there has been the question marks about Emmanuel Quickly is he playing in the right position here in terms of a point guard, or is he really destined to be that two guard? And looking at these stats, I mean, you see the jump in assists here. Like, he's playing a completely different role than he has done for the past two and a half seasons for the New York Knicks. His role with Toronto has completely changed. And with, you know, let's be honest, not the most impressive supporting cast overall. Like, after all the Raptors at this point, like, they have a 23 and 40 record. This isn't the best team in the world here. Even still averaging six and a half assists with the Raptors, and it seems though that's improving, especially with an 18 assist performance against the Phoenix Suns. Emmanuel quickly is taking some large steps in the right direction here. So I think Raptors fans, look, I think there again, there is reason to be slightly concerned about the finishing and about the overall ceiling as a playmaker. But at 24 years old, these key parts of his game, or what will be key parts of his game, hopefully for the Raptors, are very much improving especially in the playmaking category. So I think we need to preserve a little bit of the criticism. Look, the constructive criticism is good because these sort of things could stand to improve even further, but especially in the playmaking category, he is taking some big steps in the right direction. And with only more time accustomed to the system, I think we can expect us to get better and better and better as the season is going on, even if the games are going to be very difficult without Scotty Barnes and Jakob Pearl involved for the foreseeable future. But what's been great, even with... You know, that horrific loss against the Pelicans, the inexcusable loss against the Pelicans, 
and the close loss against the Phoenix Suns, even with not a great team around him. Manuel quickly is still dominating statistically, and it's kind of provided him like a nice, you know, obviously the injury is horrible to Scotty Barnes, but a silver lining that comes from it is Emmanuel quickly provided these lead reps for the team as the leader of this team on court. And he's kind of acclimating himself to taking on such a big burden, going from, you know, six man with the New York Knicks, not as involved on the ball, to being super ball dominant with the Raptors and adjusting to that. And it seems as though in this very short sample in doing so, he's adjusting to it and acclimating himself quite well. So whatever has been thrown at Emmanuel quickly so far, it seems as though he's adjusting and improving. The Raptors have made a point of giving him more opportunities to take those pull-up threes and He's an excellent three-point shooter above the break. He's actually a bad corner three-point shooter, surprisingly. So give him those opportunities where he's comfortable. And at 24 years old, he is a significant part of this team's future. Let's just see how far we can really go with this thing because we know how good Scotty Barnes is. 22-year-old all-star. And Emmanuel quickly seems as though he's an excellent fit next to him. Let's see how far these guys can take the team alongside guys like RJ Barrett and Grady Dick also improving their games for the future. So what do you make of Emmanuel quickly? Were you low on him? Perhaps I've steered you in a different direction. Were you always high on him? Give me your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below because that's all for me for today. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for all this great Raptors content. And we're doing something a little bit fun to celebrate the former three-game win streak of the Toronto Raptors. It's not quite a Darko Ryakovich pizza party, but it is a pizza party with a twist. Hope to see you there. It's a Friday night stream. If you're late watching this, you can still go back and watch it after the fact. But Hope to see you guys there. Let's just have some fun with the content here. I'll see you again next time for another video.